from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering ScienceLogic Symposium 2019. Brought to you by ScienceLogic. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE's exclusive coverage of ScienceLogic Symposium 2019 here at the Ritz-Carlton in Washington, D.C. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, but a long time customer of ScienceLogic, Carl Fosberg, who's the Senior Director of Systems Integration at Hughes. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're here in D.C., and, and that's important, because first of all, you know, you're based down here, and ScienceLogic is based down here. Yep. Bring us back a little bit. You said you, you've been a customer a long time as to uh, maybe even give us a little bit of the before sure. picture if you could. Sure, so yeah, we, we've been a customer for uh, 12 years now and um, we picked ScienceLogic for a big list of reasons. Um, actually wrote the RFI I itself and probably 20 pages long. Uh, uh, lots of people came back and gave us responses. ScienceLogic was uh, one of the shortlisted candidates that we picked out. We did a bake-off with a couple other uh, vendors and ScienceLogic was the, the clear winner. All right, so, so Carl, let, let's zoom out for a second okay. here and just give us a level set on Hughes, what Hughes is today. You know, we're, you know sure. I, I'm familiar with you know, what Hughes was you know, back in the day and there's certain pieces that are no longer there, so you know, give us a level set on the company and the business. Yeah, yeah sure, so uh, Hughes is formerly known as Hughes Network Systems. Yeah. We're owned by Equistar Corporation and uh, we're a managed service provider. We have a consumer business where we provide broadband internet to folks that live really out in the countryside and can't get cable or DSL or Fios, things like that. Yep. So we have about 1.4 million subscribers in our consumer business. Uh, we've also launched consumer services in South America, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, places like that. Uh, really serving underserved areas for, for getting them broadband. We also have an enterprise business where we sell to uh, credit card processing, uh, gas and oil, pipelines, uh, fast food, places like that. Okay, so, so Carl, is it safe to say you use satellites but no longer put them into space? We use satellites, <laughs> that's correct. We contract that out now. Yeah, we are the last remaining Hughes company. Yeah. Um, so service providers are always fascinating to me because mm -hmm. You know, we talk about enterprise IT and how fast things are changing. At least for my entire career, when I talk to service providers, you know, change mm -hmm. and growth is really, you know, just baked into the DNA. I need yeah. to move fast. You know, when you talk about scale, um, you know, it, it, it means something very different. And you know, living in that complex world, can just give us a little bit about you know what 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 things are like in 2019 for you. Uh, sure. Yeah, the uh, scale is always our challenge. We, uh, like I like to say, we have salespeople too. <laughs> and they're out there selling new products and services constantly. So we needed to be able to grow with those sales. Uh, we started out with a couple thousand devices that needed monitored and applications. Now we're up to almost 30,000 NOC systems that we monitor. Also, we're keeping track of you know, nearly two million terminals and the status of them and things like that. So yeah, scale is, is super important to us. Okay, so bring us inside you know, where science logic fits into your equation. Uh, sure. So when we put out our RFI out to industry years ago, we were trying to replace a whole bunch of different tools. You know, we had other vendor products and things like that. We really wanted to consolidate tools in as much as possible into a single platform. Uh, traditional ICMP, SNMP monitoring is how we originally started. Now we have lots and lots of integration with, with other tools, you know, APM products, uh, different streaming media products. We're integrating more and more with streaming services now in terms of getting data into the platform. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, Carl, I would love to get your viewpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, something that came through to me in the keynote is, uh, on the one hand, here is like, oh well, AI ops is going to replace things like yeah. you know the the, the 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 some of the traditional players here. <laughs> Uh, but then you see on the stage, it's like, oh, okay, we're actually going to have integrations with a number of these tooling. So yes, there's overlap, but it needs to be integrated. Now, how do you look at that? Is you know, is this, you know, the 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 primary product? Is this a piece of the product? How does data collection between all these various tools right. uh, go together? Well, that, that that's a great question because yeah. that's exactly what we and lots of other folks are grappling with right now. We've got data producers all over the place now. And we're really focused on, on the data production and high quality data back at the source uh, into a real pub sub type of architecture of which uh, we, we believe that, that ScienceLogic will be both a producer and consumer of that pub sub architecture. And 
whether it's the you know one tool to rule them all or not, probably not. No one's going to be that. Right. And and we've got uh, lots of vendors that that purport to be the one tool to rule them rule them all. But really, we're we're focused on on science logic at this point to be really the focus, especially for our, our operations folks. We've got 24/7 staff. They use science logic as their main uh, tool that they go to. Right. So that's really where we want the data to end. That's where we want as much intelligence to end as possible. So, you know, I, I'd be curious, since you've been using the tool for, for a dozen years mm -hmm. now, 12 years ago, the discussion of data was nowhere near what it was today. Can, Correct. Can you bring us through a little bit of that journey? And, sure. you know, you, you mentioned data a bunch, but, you know, how important is that? You know, where are you in your journey for, uh, you know, there was that maturity model that, that was yeah. put up there, uh, you know, the role of right. data today, and where, where do you see it going? Well. I mean, data is everything yeah. today. 12 years ago, we were grappling with things like naming conventions and, and you know, simple firewall rules and, and whatnot. Th those days are long, long past. Uh, now, the, the data quality and the pipeline is what we're focused on right now. Because like, like Dave said in the keynote, garbage in, garbage out. We're, we're really, really focused on trying to get good quality data by focusing on the source of the data, as opposed to fixing it after it's been moved into whatever platform it ends up in. So we're, we're using you know, proper schema management and trying to bake data governance into the actual engineered products. And if it's not governed data, then you don't get to look at it. Um, and that, that's really our focus. We're, we're, we're an engineering company at heart, so we actually write most of our own software. So we're kind of in control of our own destiny there. And, and we're really focused on pushing that back because we think the benefits in the long run are going to be worth that investment to get clean data all the way back to the source. Yeah, uh, so Carl, one, one of the big shifts I've seen in the last few years, when you talked about managing and monitoring, mm -hmm. I, I, I used to, as the administrator, controller, used to be able to you know, go and touch all of those pieces. Mm -hmm. Today, there's more and more some of those pieces. I need to manage not just the stuff that's in my environment or my hosted environment, but you know, outside of my environment mm -hmm. doing public clouds. Uh, Yep. To bring us up to speed as to where, where does cloud fit? How do you, what's your cloud strategy? Sure, uh, yeah. sure. we're actually launching uh, some of our first applications in GCP right now. Okay. So we're, we're working with, with our, our Google partners uh, in this particular case to, to integrate the data that they can collect natively in their systems, bring it back in, in as actionable events into ScienceLogic platform uh, while keeping the, the vast majority of the data native to their platform. No need to bring back application specific data unless we're actually going to do something with it or if we need to cross correlate it with other information. The, the data sources live in our data centers, right. not in GCP, so we need to combine it with information we know about our on-prem equipment right. plus the applications running there. So that's the data we'll bring back to cross correlate. You know, how do you decide what lives where and where, where does science logic fit in, in the whole discussion? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, what lives where? We, we kind of go back to license models and cost models. Uh, we're, we're pretty good sticklers about focus on uh, doing proper upfront analysis to make sure we don't end up with you know, some six or seven figure bill at the end of the year from, from a cloud provider. Uh, we also tend to do a lot of stuff on-prem because a lot of our systems have to run in one of our data centers. If, if you've ever driven past our building, you'll see you know, these large, large dishes and antennas outside. They, a lot of our equipment has to be within milliseconds or microseconds even of those dishes. So, so we actually have a large uh, data center presence kind of scattered around the country and around the world. So we have the compute resources to do it ourselves. Yeah, and, and even I, I would think edge computing is something that plays into mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing. Uh, you know, what, what do you see as some of the main challenges is the kind of footprint for what you're doing and th things spread out more? Uh, yeah, keeping, let's say, uh, pet projects and, and shadow IT projects uh, keeping them in check is, is a really big focus right now because, the, and, and also with DevOps, it's sort of the I'll do everything, I, I'm going to be my own IT department philosophy uh, is, is a new challenge that we're facing. So integrating with what the DevOps guys are building 
into our overall monitoring strategy, that, that's been a new challenge that uh, has really creeped up over the last, let's say, six months or a year. Okay, is there an intersection between uh, your use of uh, the science logic in the, in the DevOps team yet? Uh, not, not a big one yet. Uh, I think we're still learning DevOps at this point. It's, it's, I, I consider it a lifestyle change, not really a thing that you go get. So I think we're, we're still kind of early adoption uh, for DevOps and, and really only greenfield projects at this point in time. Okay, how about the, 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 the term of the show is AI ops. So yeah. what, what's your action to AI ops? Where do things like machine learning and automation fit into your environment? Yeah, we actually have uh, quite a few use cases where we really think that machine learning is going to help us a lot. Uh, Cross-correlation is, is a big area for us. We have lots of information, but, but figuring it out feeding like the APMs and our Cisco ACI software defined networking and, and those bits of information all into one product. We've been challenging ScienceLogic on this for, for quite a while. It's like, okay, you guys know about everything now. Tell us something that we didn't know before. And, and that's kind of where we're at and seeing the announcements from this morning was, was really encouraging that we're, we're finally see the horizon uh, uh, at this point. Yeah, if if you can, uh, you know, mm -hmm. expound on that a little bit. Sure. But, you know, how how science logic been doing on the roadmap? You know, what what helps between you know science logic and your vendor ecosystem out there? Sure. What more could they be doing to to make your your life yeah, easier? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So, if you would ask me that a year ago, I probably wouldn't have been as encouraged as I am today. Uh, it, it was a challenge, and they're an engineering company. We're an engineering company. Sometimes you have to focus on foundation. And it's, it's not cool, it's not sexy, it's not shiny, but you have to do it. And, and I think they've been focused a lot on their foundational aspects of the product, which will actually enable doing things like machine learning. There's no point in doing machine learning if you have bad data or if you have a platform that, that doesn't support you know, very, very fast queries. Uh, and the GraphQL uh, database, we, we think that we're going to use that extensively and through the API, and not even through the UIs. So I think you know, foundation is important. I think they've focused on it for the last couple of years. I, I think we're finally going to start to see the benefits of it, um, both single factor sort of machine learning, uh, anomaly detection, uh, but we really want to see it on the cross domain. Uh, I want to be able to see in science logic impacts impacted by in our full stack environment. Yeah, I, I, I'd expect you probably had some visibility into what was coming out in the Big Ben release. Is there anything yep. that you know jumped out at you or that you're ready to use day one? Uh, the automations, yeah. uh, for sure. Uh, we'll use that d uh, definitely day one. Uh, the way they've gone through and, and really made it a lot easier to use. You don't have to be a Python developer anymore to actually get uh, a lot of benefits out of the product. So I can turn that over to some of our junior engineers to, to actually handle those things. And we can get a lot more sophisticated with them now. You know, primarily we used to focus on, oh, let's send an email type of thing. Now we can actually execute back-end actions without having to have a programmer uh, to do it. So that, that right away we're going to use out of the box. Okay, and in that, that forward-looking piece, you know, mm -hmm. without, without breaking any uh, you know, visibility you have into yeah. their roadmap, what would you like to see more? Um, I'd like to see more getting performance data into their, their real scalable, laterally scalable uh, backend. And uh, th that's certainly an area that I'd love to see as, as much progress as fast as possible on. Uh, also, the PubSub, uh, you know, subscribing to, to streams uh, coming out of our Kafka cluster, uh, we want that to be in the product as soon as possible because we, we really believe that that's where the majority of our data of the future is going to come from. Uh, also, new applications, as you know, they come and go. Uh, Docker containers spin up, spin down. You know, so the state of something is no longer fixed, and we need to be able to integrate with with Kubernetes and our, our Open uh, Shift platform to be able to know well what should be running right now. Yeah. Uh, so we, those are the things that are on our roadmap that that we need yeah. out of the product as soon as possible. Yeah. So it, it definitely came to me that Science Logic's listening. Mm -hmm. are, are they are they moving fast enough for you? Uh, no, no one's ever moving fast enough. So, uh, yeah, they're they're moving. So so that's good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I could use it today if they had it. All right, uh, Carl. Last thing, uh, mm -hmm. you've been to a few of the Science Logic events yep. in, in the past. 
give us, you've been to other industry shows. What, what, mm -hmm. what, what's special about this show? What brings you and your team uh, to, to ScienceLogic Symposium? Well, uh, one of the things that ScienceLogic does a really good job is they bring a lot of resources here, and, and actual resources that actually know stuff. It's not just a bunch of salespeople telling me, oh, that's, you know, shiny new object's gonna be in the platform at some indeterminate time in the future. It's the actual engineers, people writing code, product managers, things like that. So having access directly to the people who actually you know, do the platform updates and changes uh, is super valuable. Uh, the, the new center where we can touch and feel, the, the, you know, kick the tires on, on new things has been excellent this year. Uh, so I think that's probably the thing, is just quick access to all the resources. Uh, we have a bit of an advantage. We're only 45 minutes up the road. So we can come down here as need be to visit their headquarters. But, but having everyone here at one time is, is great. All right, well, Carl Fosberg, really appreciate you sharing your, your okay. history and experience and Good. you know future direction as, as to where things are going on your end. All right. All right. I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from ScienceLogic 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE.